Hey man, let's face it, Batman is a badass, but Robin, not so much. Unless you samurize the shit out of him, and then he can actually kind of be a badass. I wonder what I would look like if somebody samurized the shit out of me. As the Extreme Channel is pushing towards 50,000 subscribers, these are just a few of the statues we are giving away on the journey there. If you want to know how to win one, stay tuned for later in the video. Hey guys, this is one of the rare times where I'm actually reviewing a statue that I've actually seen in person. I first saw the prototype of this XM Studios 1-4 scale Samurai's Robin statue in New York Comic Con 2019. Unfortunately, as you guys know, because of the Karanji virus, there was no Comic Cons in 2020. However, I do have tickets to New York Comic Con 2021. So if you're going to go there, let me know in the comments right now. It would be awesome to meet some of you, unless you're like a weird stalker. That would actually be kind of cool too, unless you're like a perverted weird stalker. Then Today we're reviewing the XM Studios Samurized Robin statue. So the reason why I got this is I own a number of their Samurai line. I'm not buying them all, a few of them I'm staying away from. But if you're a follower of the channel, you've seen that I've reviewed many, many of these pieces. Now another big question I have for you guys, should I put him next to Batman, Batgirl, or Nightwing? I'm not sure which one he's going to go next to. If you want to see which one I decide, make sure you've checked out the Extreme Channel Instagram, Facebook page, and TikTok as I post exclusive content on there. If it seems like I'm a little off, that's because I was just flying on a plane and I make sure that they feed me drinks the entire time, so yeah, I'm dealing with that. But anyway, if you don't know what's going on, is XM Studios, the manufacturer of this product, they went to DC and they said, hey, we want to make a line of Batman-related statues. So Batman, his sidekicks, and his villains, but we want to samurai the shit out of everything because samurais are cool. So they said, go ahead and do it, and that's what they've been doing. So I want to say this is the ninth or 10th piece to my collection, probably the 12th piece they've released overall. And as I said, and as I said earlier, I've actually seen him in person prior to this. But very excited to have him on the table. Going to do an extreme review for you guys. Because I've been traveling, he's actually been sitting here for a week. I bought him from the fantastic Anton Wu, who's a fantastic distributor for XM Studio stuff. I don't get paid to say that. I don't get a discount to say that. Anton Wu is just the freaking bomb. Nonetheless, this is Dick Grayson, or Robin, Batman's sidekick and or lover, depending on what you believe. And they followed suit on what they've done with a lot of their samurai pieces. So let's talk about that in the Extreme Review. And the first thing we're going to talk about is concept. Now, one important thing to remember with XM Studios samurai pieces is they love switch outs. So you can switch out the weapons or the portraits, which change up the statue a decent amount, but it still tells the same concept and the same story. So below on the base here, you have a few things going on. You have some destroyed, authentic, very Asian characteristic back in the whatever century the samurais were made. This really reminds me of their Batgirl statue. Some of these poles that are destroyed. You have a giant bell, and bells are awesome. Who doesn't love a bell? That's very sarcastic, and it's probably an inside joke that nobody caught. But that's what happens when they keep bringing me amarettos and champagne on the flight. You have a few other ties back to kind of the samurai culture. Not only on the base itself, some of the cracked stone, but on top of the bell, they have these authentic masks. And Robin is crouched on top of it in an action pose. His cape is flowing in the wind. And what I love is what they've done on all these statues is they make it very traditional and very modern, almost futuristic at the same time. That's very evident in his metallic armor but he has some very traditional weapons. And depending on what portrait you sport, some of those tiebacks are to a regular Robin, some are to an authentic Robin. Here you can see he has a sword and a bow, kind of like Donatello on the right, which makes me wonder if he could take on a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Seriously, you do not want to know what's going on in this portrait, but it's badass, it follows the line, it shows Robin who's an integral character to the Batman line, so I think the concept is fantastic. It matches everything else, like I said. Some of the switch outs really determine if it's more modernized or futuristic, and some of them are, are they more traditional? And I think they do both here. So I think it's a four out of five on the concept. And some people absolutely hate this samurai concept, which I totally understand. But me personally, I like it. They're almost museum style pieces. And some of the design is really evident of that, which really isn't true, but I thought it was a good segue. So that's why I said it. So on design, first thing we're going to look at is the unboxing and assembly of this piece. 
As usual, big old box from XM Studios. You can see right here, then they have that lid that is almost impossible to take off with the traditional foam and straps. Now, layer number one contained Robin as well as a few of the additional pieces. And one thing that they've been doing with all their statues lately is this metallic COA. I don't like these, so I put them back, but it's nice they offer them. Number two, Layer had the bell and a whole bunch of the switch out options, plus a few different base pieces. Now, XM Studios also includes a black envelope, which tr traditionally has an art print that's in the pose of the statue and a one sheet of directions. Here's the one sheet of directions, and here is the art print. Now, I always put these back in the box for the most part because I don't really like this, and I don't like displaying art prints behind my statues, but uh, it's still pretty cool that they still continue to offer this. Some of the other things I put back in the box are the switch outs. Sometimes I like all the switch outs, so I, I mix it up a little bit as I display them. Here, this is not the case. How I have them display right here, for the most part, is how he will always be displayed. But let's look at the different display options. On his left hand, you can have just a regular hand or him holding this sword. Kind of a no contest, the regular hand went back in the box. On his right hand, on his right hand, he can be holding a batarang up above his head or if you want to you can switch out both the arm and the hand for the bow and then lastly we have three portrait options starting with this ponytail piece right here this is my least favorite he looks like a bird we're going to do some close-ups on the paint and sculpt this one the mask doesn't go over his nose and his eyes aren't as intense neither is his mouth and both of these went back in the box for me. And then you have the hooded Robin portrait, which is my favorite by far. So definitely lots of cool display options. Let's measure him for you. The widest point is probably, give or take, 15 and a half inches for exact dimensions. Go to XM Studios website. It's a little over 13 inches deep. And the highest part with his bow right here is about 25 inches. Now you can slide the bow back and forth. I don't wanna do it and break it when I've been drinking, but it does slide back and forth. Now this is one four scale, meaning a real life version of Robin would be four times bigger. He does seem smaller than other characters, which traditionally Robin's a little bit younger, so that makes sense. One thing I question with the design, the base is half the statue. Sometimes that's okay, sometimes it's not. Here, I don't mind it, even though it shouldn't be okay in my opinion. It's almost too much base. But I do appreciate the switch out options, even though I don't like some of them. So I think on the design, I also give it a four out of five because everything fit well, no issues assembling. He's pretty dynamic, that's pretty cool. Now we're gonna dive into the paint and sculpt and we're gonna do a video for the close-ups. So let's check that out. So I'm reviewing these heads first as they're going back in the box now. You know, I'm never gonna mess with a guy who is a samurai and has a ponytail, but I'm not a fan of ponytails. I'm not sure what they were thinking with the blue streak through the hair. I think it would have been better without the uh, differentiation in the strands is nice, the little uh, calic here that comes down, and then kind of a buzz cut. And there is a lot of enough detail on the paint and sculpt there that makes it look good. His skin tones are almost a translucent resin. Uh, the lipstick is way too much in my opinion. I do like the whited out eyes. I like the metallic uh, 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 green flash that's on the mask, uh, which you'll see on some of the armor we look at. And this is much more preferred, in my opinion, to the other one. 
So his nose looks good, but on the other one, that's where the nose really sticks out, almost looks like a bird. And granted, I know he's a robin, but that's the big difference between these two. And then almost the other one, he has more of a pleasant smile where here he kind of has a grimace, but the same comments about the eyes. Uh, and even that little dirt they tried to put on his chin, I don't know if that's supposed to be stubble, but not a fan of these portraits at all. But I knew that coming on. Um, also on here, you see his eyes are slightly uh, closed a little bit more, still whited out, which is nice, which is all three portraits, but it looks like the same uh, head sculpt, just the portrait here, the mask, the lips, the eyes a little bit different. So moving on this last portrait, one thing we didn't talk about during design is you do wanna have this displayed a little higher because he is looking down. But a lot of the same comments on his face. I love the green metallic aspect of the mask. I don't like the lips. Almost looks like he has hypothermia or lipstick, but the skin, very translucent resin-like. And the expression, kind of a, a smart ass smirk, which we typically get from uh, Robin here. I like the cape a lot. You see these shades of blue mixed in with the black and this texturized pattern in the folds of the cape. It looks like it's really a lot of fluidity, a lot of motion to it. And then the gold trim all around it really makes it pop, I think. And down below, you know, this is really the only battle damage besides the base. So I'm not sure why they decided to go so torn. To me, the continuity of the story doesn't, doesn't continue, but it still looks good. Now, regarding Robin himself, like I said, I love this, this uh, armor that it's super clean. While there are some scratches on it from battles, it's super clean. It's this vibrant, uh, metallic, reflective uh, armor. And in it, you see little sequences of uh, some of that traditional stuff, you know, almost like these latches right here, these golden latches that build up. Some padding right here with the R symbol. R symbol's also on his hood there. And the way this metallic armor kind of concaves in the middle here, uh, indenting into his chest, so it's a snug fit, but you can still see his pants below there. You see some uh, wrinkles and folds in that. And then this hour later, our outer layer of pants on the outside. Again, kind of this uh, Japanese tradition, it's texturized down here, but very reflective nonetheless. It's a lot of detail, even with his pouches. Now, XM Studios is typically really good at pouches, not as good as Prime 1, but it looks good here. Maybe could have been a little bit cleaner around the belt area. And same thing with his boots, you know, kind of a lot of layering with those, uh, that uh, armor on top. So tons of detail, no matter where you look on Robin, the inside of his cape, this yellow color, which really helps the uh, R symbols pop. Now on the base, there's some things I really like, starting with the bell, I think the bell's fantastic. Other than the fact it's a little bit big, you have this, this uh, uh, blue coloring, kind of almost fading, giving you the age of the bell with the dents and cracks inside of it. Then everywhere there's a decorative pattern, whether it's these knobs sticking out, some uh, clover-like heart symbols towards the top. Here's some big dents in the back to indicate battle damage. Now, unfortunately, this back part will be at the back of the display, so you'll never see this, but still a lot of detail. Here's the building. And again, this is very reminiscent. I think Bane has a, a, a column like this that's been broken over. The inside where it's broken looks pretty good. It's almost like uh, they painted over it with some gloss that's, that's really hard to tell, not shiny gloss, um, which I think they could have done without. The ropes look fantastic, look like real rope. I like the age they, they gave it, kind of on the cap of the building here. They have this uh, material that they've tied down. And then you'll see the plants, and I like that they added this. It helps um, break up the, mono the monotonous of the, the stone and, and wood. The pink flowers here, look, which look fantastic on these vines. And this big pillar, very reminiscent of the Batgirl one, same comments about the broken aspect. It looks good, not amazing. I really like the metal uh, capped ends, the faded rust colors and the rivets there. And then you see some of the stone down here. A little bit of broken up tiles. 
So all that, just intense detail on the paint and sculpt everywhere on this piece. There's so much going on. But overall, I'm a fan, which I generally am on these Samurai pieces from XM, so. All right, so let's grade the paint. First of all, eliminating some of the issues with the portraits we talked about, I would give the paint a five out of five because I love how it pops. I love everything they've done with the paint. However, I think the portraits carry so much weight, it ends up being a four out of five on the paint. Now with the sculpt, like I said, not as good as some of the other pieces. Robin, I think is fantastic, every part of him. Um, the cape, a little left to be wanting, but still pretty, pretty good. The base still looks good. The base is a solid three out of five. Robin's a solid four out of five, if not higher. So we're gonna give another four out of five. That's our fourth four out of five on the sculpt for this statue. So let's talk about value on this piece. You know, these Samurai's pieces, it's so funny. Some of them go for below retail after, and it seems like the secondary characters, which I would consider Robin a secondary character. And some go for way above retail, especially like the Batmans, and for some reason, Poison Ivy, who I would also think is a secondary character. By the way, if you're selling her at retail, I will buy her in a second. So please email me at mrx at theextremechannel.com. No E in front of extreme. But they made 358 of these because these are MTO or made to order. So however many orders they get is how many they made. It was 358 or 359. If I got that wrong and I said 358 and it's really 359, you should unsubscribe because I don't know shit. But retail price was 1290 Singapore dollars, which depending on the exchange rates is anywhere from 900 to 1000 US dollars plus you pay a couple hundred dollars shipping. That's a lot for a 1/4 scale statue. The edition size or the ES that I was talking about, that's how many they made, is pretty low, but I highly doubt you're going to find someone who buys just this statue. You have to find someone who's buying more of the Samurai line. So I don't think the resale value is great. I think at best it's a three out of five. I may be able to make my money back someday. I don't think this is as good as some of the other pieces. So let's talk about that. Does it have the X factor? Is it a five out of five statue? No, it's not. I think Nightwing is way better. I think the Joker's better. I think the Batman statues are better. However, as I said, I'm not getting every piece in the line. They just tease the Scarecrow. I don't think I'm going with that one. I still want the Poison Ivy. I have the Penguin on order, but I still think this is a cool statue. I would say it's either a weak four out of five or a strong three out of five. Now, normally I go with the lower score, but I've been drinking, so we're just gonna give it a four out of five because XM Studios did so many right things. And the fact that I'm not a huge Robin fan is probably affecting my judgment, or it could be the nine or 10 drinks I had before I did this review. We will be giving all of these statues away plus additional ones at every 5,000 subscriber milestone. To win one of these statues, all you have to do is make sure you've liked this video, you've subscribed to the channel, you've hit that bell notification, and then just drop a comment below. Every 5,000 subscriber milestone, we are going to do a random drawing and pick a random comment and give one of these statues away, plus some additional ones I'm not showing right now. The more videos you comment on, the higher your chances are to win. But thanks so much for tuning in, guys. I really mean that. I say it all the time. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate all the likes you give, so make sure to do that. And if you want to see more of these samurai pieces or even some non-DC related pieces, hit that picture of me to subscribe to the channel. I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.